I'm here with Bill McLucas, and um, we're at Wilmer Hale. Uh, Bill, what's your current title and affiliation? Right now, I'm the uh, head of the securities department, a partner at the firm. I've been here now. It will be uh, 20 years this spring since I left the SEC. And w tell us about your past affiliation with the SEC. What 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 titles did you hold there? I, mean, I joined the staff in. Um, August or September of 1977 as a staff lawyer. Uh, I ended up becoming a branch chief under Stanley Sporkin. I was made an assistant director under John Fetters. I was made an associate director um, under Gary Lynch in 1986, uh, I think, or 85. And then I became the director in um, late December 1989. So, wow! So a long, a long, uh, a long career. Two there. jobs, there are three yeah. jobs in my life. But uh, the SEC was twenty-one years, and then I've been at at, yeah. uh, at Wilmer, and I was at a small banking agency before I went to the SEC, right out of law school. So, and so, what are some of the key issues that you covered in this oral history that you did in twenty twelve? Well, we talked about um, what it was like to work for some of the people that had been at the commission. Uh, I talked about Stanley and John, and uh, I, I worked for five different chairmen, two of them as the director, uh, Richard Breeden and Arthur Levitt. We spent some time talking about my experience with both of them. And then generally we talked about the um, evolution of the program and the change in the mix of challenges that the SEC has dealt with over the 21 years or so since I was there and then and then obviously the 20 years since that the Commission's been dealing with a whole host of new issues and problems in the uh, wake of the Madoff scandal and the 2008 market collapse. But we talked about as much as you could talk about in, in an hour and a half <laughs> about all those things. So. Gotcha. And looking back, I mean, is there anything that you would highlight today or, or, or reflect on in a way uh, today that, that you'd want people to know about? Well, you know, the, the, the markets have changed, the world has changed dramatically, um, and frankly, the enforcement approach has changed uh, quite a bit. I mean, um, there were always criminal cases, there were always whistleblowers and informants. Um, there wasn't always uh, an internet with iPhones and Blackberries and 24-hour uh, uh, news coverage. That, perhaps as much as anything, changed the markets and changed the, um, the pace of enforcement and the need to react quickly in the 80s. We went from the 60s and the 70s in this country uh, from being a nation of, <clears throat> excuse me, savers to being a nation of investors when, when suddenly we had uh, CNBC and we had the market explosion in the late 80s and into the 90s, all those people who had put their money in passbook savings accounts and certificates of deposit began moving it into the market and we had an explosion of um, retail investors. That uh, really had an enormous impact on uh, the, both the size of the market, the pace of trading, and the need basically to refocus the enforcement program in a way that was directed at individual investors, protecting retail investors, and frankly dealing with a market that just changed so dramatically from what the country had been accustomed to for several decades before. You know? Interesting. Um, so, Bill, you were one of the founding trustees of the SEC Historical Society. Um, why do you think it's important to preserve this history? Well, you know, first of all, it, it is a great agency, and the lore and the history of the agency are pro probably as important as the law and as, um, uh, as the enforcement program or the policy initiatives of any particular uh, commission or any particular chairman. And I think you learn a lot about uh, 
yourself and you learn a lot about the way the government interacts with people and the way it ought to behave by looking at where we've been and how we've done things. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the risks I think we have in this environment because of the pace of things, because of the internet, because of the uh, enormous appetite to see immediate results and to, you know, uh, uh, bring cases that have a bigger fine and a larger penalty and a, uh, a larger disgorgement is we forget in some respects, you know, that there's a broader process that the agency, in my view, should stand for. It's not just law enforcement. It's a way of uh, dealing with not only protecting investors and protecting um, the retail markets, but the process part of it is as important as the outcome and the, and the sense of being compassionate, being fair, being balanced, being disciplined on both sides of the table is important. I mean, um, post Madoff and post market collapse, the political climate and if you were to ask the man in the street uh, what his view of corporate America was, you'd get a very, you'd have gotten a very, very critical and negative perspective. That fueled an appetite to go out and find the bad guys and punish them. And, and there certainly were people who did uh, bad things, broke the rules, uh, were you know, aggressive beyond what was appropriate. Um, but the broader issue of who was responsible and how did we end up with a market collapse was so diffuse and a fair amount of it could be laid to rest at the feet of people in Washington not necessarily just on Wall Street. I think that got lost in the mix and we ended up seeing um, uh, cases brought, penalties demanded, and uh, sanctions imposed that were disproportionate sometimes to the record and the facts in some of those cases. And I, to me, um, a little bit of more sobering appreciation of history and of what the agency has always stood for would have been would have been valuable, and I think we were in a political climate where that was unlikely to be something that we could uh, probably expect. But I thought that the um, enforcement reaction, uh, while understandable, was you know sometimes a little too aggressive for what the record and what the facts warranted. So. And that's why, you know, I have said, I worked for Stanley Spork and he was the uh, second director of the division and the first person that I worked for as a director. And he was a, if you look back at the uh, history of the enforcement program and the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and the Foreign Payments Program, uh, the SEC was a pretty tough place and they ran a very aggressive and tough-minded enforcement program. But the worst thing you could do as a staff lawyer was have your, the defense lawyers and the client get in front of Stanley because he had such a big heart. I mean, he would settle a case, he would make concessions, he would make a judgment about whether uh, a company was really a bad enterprise or whether an individual was a bad person. And if he believed that uh, there was a deal to be made and somebody wasn't as villainous as the staff had perhaps portrayed them to be, Stanley would find a way to give them a break. And, and over time, I think, you know, as, we, as I get older and my hair gets grayer, you start to appreciate that there's a considerably more gray in the world than black and white. And very few people are as bad as we make them out to be. And, very few times are we as absolutely pristine and right in our uh, assessments of the, our cases when we're in the government as we believe we are. And I think it's that sort of perspective that the agency, you know, needs to have an appreciation of. And, and, and you know, it's turned over so dramatically in the last few years. I go over there and they, the staff lawyers look to me like they're in high school, but they're not. <laughs> and, it's just a, uh, there's a real value in having an appreciation for what went before you, 
who went before you and how they did things. And you may not agree with everything they did, but there's something to be learned from it. And that's why I think uh, this is valuable. Can you imagine what it would be like if we had actual um, live video or footage of uh, Jerome Frank or Joe Kennedy or, uh, or Justice Douglas as the guys who really were at the agency when it was formed. I mean, it was pretty. It would have been pretty remarkable. And there, you know, Seligman's done a remarkable book on uh, on the SEC and the transformation of Wall Street. It's, uh, but but that kind of learning, I think, about a, a place like the SEC is really valuable. So, thank you so much, Bill. Okay, thank you.